Funding for Schaefer Ellis is provided by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. I will tell you more at the conclusion of the video. Hey everyone, happy Halloween! I tell ya, nothing gets me in the evil mood quite like those good old villain songs. So I figured I would rank my 10 favorites before realizing that 10 wasn't nearly enough spots, there's too many great ones. So we're gonna go pretty rapid fire and discuss my 30 favorite villain songs in relatively quick succession. A lot of these are very popular and very talked about, so I'm not gonna go super in depth with those ones. I mean, William and I ranked our 10 favorite Disney villain songs a couple years back, so I don't want to repeat a ton of what we said, but I will go into more detail tell with the more obscure, recent, or unconventional picks on this list. One more thing, I'm obviously not providing audio clips due to copyright reasons, but there is a playlist with all 30 songs in the description and the end card, so I highly encourage you to give it a listen after the video is over. Or you could pull up the playlist right now and pause the video to listen to each song after I talk about it. Whatever works! You do you, boo. Okay, without further ado, let's get wicked. <laughs> Even the worst song in Prince of Egypt is good enough to make this list. Playing with the big boys is slimy, sinister, and single-handedly justifies the high priest being in the movie. It's got neat visuals and builds to a bombastic conclusion, even if it's a bit slow to start. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> Gee, it sure is too bad that Plankton never got a villain song that wasn't bullshit. Oh, wait! When the going gets tough, sees our favorite one-celled menace spitting straight bars. Seriously, I never thought Plankton rapping would be amazing, but it just is. Please give this song and this show a listen. It's a great intro to musical theater for complete newcomers. And if you want more advanced intros to musical theater, stay tuned on this list. Charming. Is a slut. This character is one of the highlights of Great Comet, as is her villain song, Charming. Listening to her casually promote infidelity with such finesse in both English and Russian is wild. It's a blast of a song, and it was one of my favorite parts when I saw the show on Broadway. Maybe someday I'll see it on Broadway again. <laughs> like that's ever gonna be quiet. My high school drama teacher is gonna hate me for this, but I don't really like Oklahoma. Look, I'm sorry, Mr. Crick. It's been five years. I can't hold it in any longer. But while a lot of this show is bad and outdated, even though I've heard the uh, current Broadway revival is actually pretty good, but uh, we're not gonna talk about that. I actually really like how it has a villain protagonist. Curly is evil. Don't believe me? Listen to Poor Judd is Dead, a song all about Curly getting jealous of the stable hand guy going to the big shindig with the girl he likes. So Curly decides to fix this problem by convincing Judd to commit suicide. Wait, what the fu- It's remarkably sinister, and on top of this, the harmonies between the two of them are great. It's haunting and filled with subtle malice. And I feel like it was Rogers and Hammerstein's intention to let Curly showcase his true colors through this song. That's great stuff. I'm still not a big fan of this musical, sorry not sorry. They're not even a real country anyway. Blame Canada is an Oscar-nominated passionate ballad from South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. It's all about blaming Canada for the degradation of our youth. I don't think I need to explain why this is on the list. It's comedy gold, and the first AMV I ever watched on YouTube was Disney villains singing this. Watch that. A friend is a friend to the end of the Oh hell yeah, friends on the other side time. The middle's a little slow, but loaded with clever foreshadowing, and the beginning and ending just kill it with how smooth, jazzy, and bombastic they are. Keith David knocks this thing out of the park, and I think the visuals in this song are an excellent example of how well Musker and Clemens construct dynamic animation to go with their musical numbers, especially compared to every other Disney director working today, but that's a story for another day. Jafar, Jafar, he's our man if he can't do it. Great! I took suggestions on Twitter for this list, but ended up realizing that it's hard to get invested in a villain song when you don't know its context in the story. Except Jaleesa's suggestion, that one killed it. Get it. Killer Instinct is hysterical and shows how vicious and manipulative a 15 year old cheerleader can be. I feel like this song is even funnier without knowing the context of the show, cause I didn't. And I still really don't. So give it a listen. You'll love it, probably. Maybe. We'll see. 
Go listen to it. Genie of the Lamp! Fairly Odd Parents is not really known for great music, but it's got some jams, honestly. Give Me the Wand is just so good. Sure, half of it belongs to Cosmo, who sounds like Diana DeGarmo, but Norm the Genie takes center stage and outlines his totally not sinister machinations and reasons why he wants to become a fairy. Great instrumentation, great visuals, great vocals. He would have had my vote to win Fairy Idol. I'm the genie of the land. Oh, God, please, no! All right, listen up. This is the last time I'm gonna compliment Pocahontas. Savages is, is pretty good. It ties into the whole obnoxious both sides scene of the issue of colonialism, and the lyrics are ridiculously on the nose. They're different from us, which means they can't be trusted. But the visuals are fantastic. It makes for an intense climax. The three-part aspect once Pocahontas joins in is rad, and like I don't know, it's a good example of how prejudice and misunderstanding can lead to bloodshed. It just suffers from a lot of the same issues the entire movie has, but it's still good. Fine, whatever. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over, and over. I heard the story of Steven Universe. Don't really like how it ends. That's why Spinel finally makes me feel seen. I'm just yanking your chains, by the way. I know it's Spinel. And once again, her villain song is a bop. It's bouncy and fun, which goes really well with her stretchy physique. But it's also got a nice sinister element to it as well. The best part is how the lyrics foreshadow future revelations about her character and her motivation. It's honestly brilliant how well integrated these little lyrical touches are. I'm the loser of the game. You didn't know you were playing. The only issue I have with this song is how short it is and how I wish there were more verses, which is an issue with a lot of songs from the Steven movie. I wish they could have done more quality over quantity and expanded some of their better songs while cutting others. But regardless, this one's pretty rad. All right, Magic Conch, what do we do now? Ladies and gentlemen, Veggie Tales cracked the top 20. I don't know how. They actually had a few great villain songs to pick from, but the OG one is something you can't go wrong with. Oh No is kind of like the junior version of This Jesus Must Die, but it's ridiculously catchy and hilariously inventive, with all the wacky concepts the high priests come up with to get rid of Daniel. And the animation is... ambitious? I mean, this was pre-Toy Story, so like, they really, really tried. At least the lyrics and orchestrations are fantastic. Women are as slick as eels. Poor Unfortunate Souls is rad, but much like Friends on the Other Side, it's got a slow middle and even a slow beginning this time. But once that ending kicks in, hot damn. This is a quintessential villain song that showcases how sinister this lady and her ambitions are. The way it builds and builds to this amazing ass climax gives me life. It's so solid. Now in Hades Town, there were a lot of villain songs. There's a number of great sinister ballads sung by our resident Lord of the Underworld, including Why We Build the Wall, which, looking at that title, I know what you're thinking, and yes, this is an intentional parallel to the song Build a Wall from Shrek the Musical. But I hate Shrek the Musical, so I'm not picking this one. My pick is Hey, Little Songbird. It's a dark, low, immensely sinister ditty featuring Hades tempting the innocent young songbird Eurydice and saying, Hey, come on down to Hades Town. But she's like, Mm mm, mm mm, I got some food. Food? Why didn't you say so, my man? I'm gonna sign my entire life over to Hades for this little bag of food, man. I'm a f idiot. Also, I saw this show on Broadway a couple weeks ago, and what really stuck out with this song was the staging and lighting. Hades would get a spotlight shown on him immediately every time he started singing. And that, coupled with him circling Eurydice over the course of the song, wearing intimidating shades the whole time, made for a fantastic visual. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Hades Town is incredible and everyone should see it, but unfortunately we live in a society where Broadway tickets are incredibly inaccessible to the average consumer. Boy, isn't that swell? <laughs> Always having trouble with his look. Here we go, a Halloween boy. Oogie Boogie delivers an all time classic of a musical number, complete with spooky dice, spookier bats, spookiest toy soldiers, all while he relentlessly torments Santa Claus. That's the good shit. I love the black light design of the place. I love the way Oogie moves. I love that random voice crack. Better pay attention now. It's maybe a little too simple and repetitive, which prevents it from being higher, but it's awesome. 
Y'all know it. Beep, boop, boop, bop, boop, boop, beep. Oh hell yeah, video game representation. Once You Gone is sonically and lyrically rich, showcasing how GLaDOS is finally ready to move on from that pesky test subject who pretty much ruined her entire operation. It's a great send off to the character since Valve is creatively bankrupt and never gonna make another one of these games. Still Alive was excellent, but this is the GLaDOS credits number perfected. Gosh, it disturbs me to see you, Gaston. Only at number 15. Every song here would love to be you, Gaston. You're cooler than Planet Sheen. Speaking of which, holy shit, I was listening to the Planet Sheen theme song the other day. Keep in mind, I've never heard it before. And oh my god, it's one of the worst musical compositions ever created. I'm dead serious. They didn't try and they seem proud of that fact. The song is literally just random words in a random order while Sheen comments on how it makes no sense and is terrible. Like wow, what an observation, great work, I couldn't tell that this was a piece of shit on my own but I'm so glad you were here to tell me. Whoever greenlit this show should be ashamed of themselves. Who even asked for this? Who asked for Jimmy Neutron in space but with worse animation and only Sheen? I am genuinely shocked that Planet Sheen was not amongst the plagues God inflicted upon Egypt in order to free the Hebrews. It would fit right in. It is not a show. It is a deadly Sin. Anyway, yeah, Gaston is a pretty good song. Darkness. <gasps> what? I've never seen Anastasia, but damn, this villain song tells me everything I need to know about the villain while also being catchy as hell and evil as heck. The beat is fantastic, the vocals are intense, the visuals are... Uh, at least it sounds amazing. I'm honestly shocked I haven't watched this movie yet since it's now a part of the official Disney Princess canon. But even so, this song is a jam and a half. Definitely give it a listen. April, feeling blue. Assassins is like 90% villain songs, and so many of them are absolute bangers. It really just comes down to choice with this show, and my preference has always been The Ballad of Guiteau. Charles Guiteau had something along the lines of a parasocial relationship with President Garfield, one might say. He delivered like two terrible speeches in favor of Garfield being president, then considered himself directly responsible for Garfield winning the election. So he was like, I want to be ambassador to France now that I won you the election! And Garfield was like, Kowalski. Sorry sir, no clue. So Gato got mad and shot him and this is a song about that. It's a haunting showcase of this man's insanity and how chipper he remains in the wake of a murder he insisted God told him to perform. The cheerful, upbeat disposition of this song is what gives it its dark edge and it leads to a sensational ending. Just a fantastic villain song on all fronts. You're going to jail, Bart. Cell Block Tango is friggin' iconic. The hilariously petty reasons some of these women murdered their husbands are absolutely delightful. It's maybe a little long for my tastes, but for the most part, it's bombastic, funny, deliciously evil, and a blast to listen to. You must die! Must die? Must die. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar has quite a few great villain songs, but this Jesus Must Die undoubtedly takes the cake. I know it's only nine spuffs about... What? I know it's only 9 spots above Oh No What We Gonna Do, but it's leaps ahead in terms of Bible-based musical numbers about evil priests plotting the destruction of a radical popular guy who threatens to undermine their power and control. From Caiaphas's doom-filled low notes, to Annas' ludicrous high notes, to all the harmonies in between, this is a fantastic villain song in every way. I might be a bit of a forehead for leaving it out of the top 10, but I think it just goes to show how fantastic these top 10 really are. Buckle up. Hamilton is such a difficult show to pinpoint who the villains are. Aside from King George, that is. But like, in the context of the show, is Burr a villain? Is Jefferson a villain? Or do they just happen to disagree with our main character and thus take up an antagonistic role? It's a slippery slope and quite difficult to determine what qualifies as a villain song in this show. So I'm gonna do something maybe a bit controversial here and say that my favorite villain song in Hamilton is Say No to This. Really think about it. Everyone in this song is a villain. Mariah is a temptress, James Reynolds is a blackmailing asshole, and Hamilton is cheating on his perfect wife for no good reason. He's the biggest villain in this song. What he does is legitimately evil and Lynn knows this. We're supposed to hate him for his actions here, and I do. On top of that, this is, simply put, an absolute banger. One of the best songs in one of the best musicals ever written. Is that controversial? D do people not think the show is amazing? anymore. I don't care. It is. Y'all are just mean. I live! I'm alive from next to normal. 
I really wish I could say more without getting into spoilers, but this is the one work of fiction I least want to spoil out of every work of fiction ever made. Watch Next to Normal. Or listen to the song, you probably won't understand what's so evil about it, but fortunately it's insanely catchy, so you'll probably enjoy it anyway. Now we're really kicking things into high gear. Aida is a vastly underrated musical. It's big and not exactly subtle, but it has some bangers and Like Father Like Son is one that never seems to get any love. It's a back and forth between villain father and hero son, but the villain has the floor more of the time and the rock and beat mixed with a battle of ideologies makes this such a blast to listen to. God, Aida needs more love. Give this song a listen and if you like it, just know that there's more awesome, dramatic, cheesy in a good way Elton John rock where that came from in the rest of the soundtrack. <laughs> Is Javert a villain? It's a philosophical question every theater kid must burden themselves with at one point. But the answer is yes. Javert thinks he's being righteous and doing the Lord's work, but he's actually turning his back on the plights of the poor and using religion and law to justify it. Yeah, that sounds evil. So while Stars is not really a conventional villain song, I mean, it's actually kind of beautiful. It still stands as an expression of his flawed outlook on righteousness and the not very moral chase he's about to give poor Jean Valjean. I like its use in the movie where he sings it before the Three Houses time skip, since it shows how he remains vigilant in his search all those years. With that said, holy shit, don't listen to the movie version, good lord. Safe behind <laughs> Philip Quaster bust, baby! Open this door! <laughs> Open this door! I don't like a ton of musical adaptations of movies, but holy shit, Heathers is kind of amazing. Meant to be yours is the absolute pinnacle of this great show. It's catchy as hell and the lyrics are wildly creative. Plus JD's sanity slippage is in full force here, to the point where he plans to blow up the school and leave a fake note from everyone who died blaming society. That's right. This is the We Live in a Society song. Do you see now why it's this high on the list? It's dark and funny with a great beat, absurd lyrics, and those really uncomfortable bits where JD tries to play the softy card of Veronica and pretend they're still in love. It's a blast, pun completely intended. All right, now some honorable mentions that we're gonna put at the number five spot so there's at least some suspense. King Dice's song from Cuphead. This is my number 31. This is this is bad. You know, it's, it's cool, it's jazzy, I like it. The whole being dead thing from Beatles. Beetlejuice. Yeah, I saw Beetlejuice on Broadway and I loved it. I was surprised by how good it was. And this is a song that is good. And Adam Driver, you killed Han Solo! Do you ever feel bad for Adam Driver? It's like, he, he doesn't, he deserves to be in better movies. And he's in a lot of great movies these days, but like, he deserves better than the Star Wars sequels. Anyway, I want to be like you ooh, ooh, from the Jungle Man world. William's gonna kill me for not putting this on the list. I'm the bad guy from Wander Over Yonder. This was a good song, but I don't watch Wander Over Yonder, so I don't know the context. But it's good. The Hounds from that, uh, that Mega Man album William recommended. That's all I know about it. It's a good song, though. Prince Ali Reprise from Aladdin. Really, if it was longer, then this would be definitely on the list. How bad ad can I be? I genuinely can't believe I unironically considered this for the list. What a society we live in. Yodel Odel Obey Me from Phineas and Ferb, because it's the catchiest shit ever, and I would definitely do whatever Doof said if he sang this. Easy Street from Annie. I don't really like Annie, but Easy Street is rad. Sweet Transvestite from Rocky Horror, because this is a jam. That's it. That's my review. It's Our House Now from Mickey's House of Mouse Villains. Mickey's House of Mouse Villains. This is good too. And finally, the Great Mighty Pooh song. I deeply regret this not being on the list. I'm sorry, maybe in another life. That's my honorable mentions. Good night, everybody. Back to the top five. Today is the Feast of the Epiphany. Not you! That's it! In case you couldn't tell, this video was all part of my evil plot to get you all to listen to me talk about musicals. You idiots! You fell for it! And you can't click away because you need to know what place I ranked shiny at. I have you in my grasp even as you gloat and I'll shove musicals down your f***ing throat! But for real, this is the last Broadway musical song, I swear. Epiphany is one of the oldest and arguably most iconic songs on this list. This is how you present an absolute madman through music. Again, though, don't listen to the movie version, good lord. But not for long. 
This is Sweeney going from kinda bad guy to complete evil nutcase. Complete with pounding orchestrations, amazing lyrics, shifting tempos to go with Sweeney's increasing insanity. This is just the complete package. What villain song could possibly top this one? Well, well, well. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Am I really gonna rank Shiny over Epiphany? Of course I am! It's shiny. You have the impeccable vocal performance of Jermaine Clement. You have the exceptionally creative animation direction of Clements and Musker. You have the genius compositions and lyrics of Lin-Manuel Miranda. You have a villain who's so gleefully absurd that he completely hijacks the film itself to deliver this number. He comes this close to eating Moana. He beats the shit out of Maui and proceeds to mock him for having PTSD as he does it. His facial expressions and body language sell every gleefully dark moment. Just Dude, this is it. Everyone else go home. Nothing else Disney animation has put out in the past 20 years can even hold a candle to the magnificence of this sequence and this song. I could probably talk about this shit for like an hour or something, but nobody wants to see that, so let's move on. Prepare yourself. I must be totally fair and objective here. Be Prepared is still better than Shiny. It's just a wonderful villain song in every way. Delightfully dark with clever lyrics, intense visuals, great vocals, and the buildup of a sinister plan that actually does end up panning out in the end. I don't know what else there is to add here. This song is excellent and everyone knows it. If you want to make an exceptional villain song, use this as your starting off point. It's wildly fantastic. That's right, Piranha Plant will take root in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Little Shop of Horrors, baby! I know I promised there'd be no more Broadway musicals, but Little Shop isn't all Broadway musical, is it? Haha, <laughs> nobody's smart but me! Everyone loves the point to point of Dentist or Feed Me as the premier villain songs from Little Shop, and they're great. But they pale in comparison to the movie exclusive Mean Green Mother from Outer Space. This is everything you could possibly want in a villain song and more. Audrey 2 is imposing, hysterical, and a never-ending source of deliciously malicious energy. She spawns tiny backup singer buds, throws a cash register through a window, grabs a motherfucking gun and starts shooting Seymour, busts his balls, and in the canon version, eats him alive by the end. It's an absolute roller coaster ride with hilarious lyrics, an insanely catchy beat, the best puppet effects ever put to film, and one hell of a committed vocal performance from Levi Stubbs. This shit is so good they nominated it for an Oscar. That's right, one of only two villain songs to ever receive an Oscar nomination, the other being the aforementioned Blame Canada. God, this is just absolutely perfect. What could possibly top it? Yeah, it's Hellfire. What else could it even be? This song is truly in a league of its own. It's shocking. It's rich. It's dark. It's intense. It is the musical embodiment of pure evil, and no other villain song in existence even comes close to matching its pure malice. Frollo has convinced himself that his lust and distorted desires are no fault of his own, and merely the doing of a demonic temptress. The visuals are absolutely insane. The escalation from the prayer-like opening to the bellowing malice of the ending is phenomenal. It pushes the artistic boundaries of animation like no musical number before or after it. It's perfect in every way. You know it's perfect. It's Hellfire, man. You can't beat it. And you know what else you can't beat? Squarespace. Let me tell you why. In song form. Nah, I'm just kidding. Can you imagine though? Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website building tool that'll make your business or your personal hobby stand out. You can do so many great things with Squarespace. Showcase your photography, sell your own homemade products, blog about your favorite movies. Basically anything you want, Squarespace can make it come to life with its beautiful, easy to use website templates. Squarespace can authenticate all your social media profiles so you can auto post your content to Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr. All your posts are optimized and tagged properly, so descriptions and titles will be correctly referenced. It's also super easy to check analytics and see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. Gain insight into your top traffic sources, products, device types, browsers, and operating systems by visits. You also own all of the content you put on the Squarespace platform, with one-click data portability offered. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.